Okay, everybody, now that we've talked about some of the enlightenment changes, if you will, that occurred, let's talk about some nations that were kind of avoiding that type of thing, uh, specifically England and France. Okay, when last we left England, um, they had a specific level of unity under James I, okay, in joining together England and Scotland, and we discussed that, and then some things went okay, but some things went not so okay, and you ended up getting um, the Civil War, and then eventually coming out of the English Civil War, you ended up, at, well, not only the English Civil War, but then the Glorious Revolution after that, you got the establishment, really, of a um, constitutional monarchy, okay? So those are things that are very important to understand in what we are talking about, all right? Now, in this constitutional monarchy, what you did have were specific powers that left for the king and specific powers that were left for parliament. So the king, in general, his job is to appoint, like, ministers, um, specifically that are going to carry out his wishes. He also has a role in war and foreign policy, um, kind of like the, the big, big stuff, if you will. Whereas Parliament is gaining power at this point, okay? Parliament is gaining, or they have gained the power, they make a lot of the laws, they levy taxes, so a lot of the stuff that the king wants to do, he can't necessarily do because it requires the money from them. And then uh, their job is to also pass a budget. Now, the thing is about Parliament, though, and this is important to understand, it is dominated by the landed aristocracy, and actually, and they make up the House of Lords, but even in the House of Commons, um, most of those people are smaller landowners, and that is going to definitely cause issues, I guess you could say, as we move forward, because you're still not looking at complete rights for people. Um, and... When we go to, as I, as I go down here, the rights of officials and who is in, or the rights and who is in charge, what I mean by that is a couple th different things. Like, one, individual people, they do have right of expression, and you have jury trials and still like that, but voting was still a little bit sketchy. They still had property requirements to vote, which not many people had. There really wasn't anything in the way for women, and Parliament and the King could often have some issues because there was this kind of gray area over who's really going to, to run things. Now, during the 1700s, we are going to get some changes because Queen Anne, who was the last of the Stuart dynasty after James, um, is going to die without an heir. And what ends up happening is uh, one of her cousins... George I of Hanover, which is in Germany, so he's a German, is appointed to the throne. And he actually doesn't even speak English. Um, I have here others. There were other people that were actually, um, that, that were descended from Anne and James. The problem is, is they were actually Catholics, and by their laws, Catholics cannot hold the throne, so it goes to a German guy over here. Now, under his term, you will start to get the rise of prime ministers, and they will grow in importance. We mentioned the first prime minister earlier, Sir Robert Walpole, but now what you have is the office of prime minister has now morphed into something. The prime minister now runs parliament, and because parliament has a lot of power, this is a significant position. And during this time, the guy that really grows is a man by the name of William Pitt the Elder. There will be William Pitt the Younger. And what he is going to really get England in a position for, and we're going to be getting there, is this idea of an expansionist policy. And when we get to imperialism and stuff like that, you're going to see England is going to expand into 
India, oh, I'm sorry, England is going to expand into India and Canada and other places in Asia. They'll come to dominate much of China long term. And a lot of this can go back to William Pitt the Elder. Now, he started to get a little bit, um, I guess, power hungry. And eventually he gets fired by one King George III. Now, we are going to be talking about King George III a little bit in, in a more deep level later, but he, of course, is the king when the American Revolution takes place. Um, he is a king that will also suffer from um, mental illness and some instability that will lead to some issues going forward. And um, also under him, under George III, they will officially bring Northern Ireland in, and that's where we get the title of United Kingdom. Even though Northern Ireland was pretty much conquered by uh, goes all the way back to Oliver Cromwell. In this case, you now have the formation of what is known as the United Kingdom, which, of course, is Britain, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, and that still holds for today. But with George, again, you're going to see this back and forth going with the prime ministers, and it's the king in power, and we're starting to see threats to the power of the king. But a lot of these other Enlightenment ideals aren't necessarily like going crazy here in the government. Now, France, however, really has got a whole lot of, of nothing as far as expansion is involved. Um, they, of course, have a lot of debt from all those wars of Louis XIV. Um, the grandson of Louis XIV, actually his great-grandson, I apologize, was the heir to the throne. And so a guy's going to step in by the name of Cardinal Fleury, and for a little while, things are going to be okay, because under Cardinal Fleury, they're able to um, stabilize kind of the government a little bit. He starts to work on their debt. Um, this eventually is leading to King Louis XV. But unfortunately, there's still massive oppression. You can't speak out. You can't really do anything without permission of the crown. On the bottom right there, I have a picture of the Bastille prison. You had lots of political prisoners, polit prisoners of conscience, what we say. A prisoner of conscience is someone who like openly speaks out against somebody and then as a result can get sent to jail. So even though France is going to get stabilized a little bit under the, really you can call it the reign or term of Cardinal Fleury, they still have these kind of outside issues. And that really really is going to start to come to, to fruition again with uh, Louis the Fifteenth. Louis the Fifteenth himself is kind of weak and a little bit of a loner, um, and he is going to cause a lot of debt issues, as I'm going to explain. One of those being will being will. One of those reasons being, man, sorry, I'm a mess today, um, the involvement of France in the Seven Years' War, and we're going to talk about that very specifically in a separate video, but to go along with that, so France is, the short of it is that France is going to lose big time in the Seven Years' War. They're going to lose a lot of land in control of areas, particularly they'll lose to the British out in Canada, but he is going to just step up his living like he is going to, as I say, live large. He is going to... Um, pamper himself, he's going to flaunt his wealth, and the influence of this is is really crucial as well because he kind of lets these ministers come in and just convince him like, well, this is a good idea, so you should do this, or this is a good idea, so you should do that. And you're starting to get some problems that will be developing for certain groups because they don't get a lot of opportunities to uh, the, the commoners aren't going to get a lot of opportunities here. So they got a rich king, he's living in Versailles, he's doing whatever they want, they're all getting sent to these wars all over the place. France is losing these wars, and they are now going to get themselves in a little bit of trouble. Okay, so that's kind of you know some information about two of the big dogs that are being active, I guess, at this point, um, a little bit different than some other things, but some other nations, but these are some things that we need to, to address as we move forward, okay? So England and France, England, you know, did some reforms prior to this time, and then they kind of bail out of those types of things, and then later on from that, they're going, and, and then France is going to have some major problems because they just don't want to give anybody any rights, and that's not going to be good. So, um, Make sure you get comments and questions, and we'll talk about a lot of different things, and, and we'll, uh, we'll get to it in class. See you guys soon.